this video, I'm going to be talking about and giving closure to the symbol known as the tilde. Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about this symbol, and I've done multiple, multiple videos which include closure on this symbol. However, I don't think I've ever done a video specifically addressing the symbol in and of itself, uh, focusing on the symbol at the exclusion of everything else. It's always been a part of something else I was explaining. And the, I think the most recent one I did was the video I did on location and how one would articulate a location using correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and that may have been last year. So I've been getting questions about it, and this is one of those things where if I haven't already created a video specifically about it, might as well create one so that people can just look it up, use the search, uh, search function on YouTube, and get the closure there. Now the tilde, when used in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and by that I mean the quantum grammar technology brought to the public by Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller, in that context, uh, context, in that domain, the tilde uh, represents location. It represents any type of location that you would use. Most times, with correct sentence structure, you will find a symbol in the fiction, and then whatever it means in the fiction will usually carry that same meaning over into correct sentence structure such as the period. In the fiction, the period is a full stop. In correct sentence structure, the period is a full stop. In the fiction, the hyphen connects compound terms. In correct sentence structure, the hyphen connects compound and creates compound facts, etc., etc. You will find a very similar, if not identical, meanings carry over between the two domains. The tilde is, the ex is uh, an exception to that. And the reason is, is because if you look up tilde, if you parse it, it will usually come back to something like title. And if you look at Google or in Webster's 1828 dictionary or different styles manuals, you will find that the tilde can mean several different things. Uh, it is used in Spanish uh, to denote pronunciation. It is used sometimes to articulate a missing letter or a substitute, <clears throat> or, or something of that nature, or an approximation. In mathematics it will, or, or like when you're articulating, when will the meeting take place? And then you put tilde 30 minutes, it means approximately 30 minutes. So in those sense, those things would not work in correct sentence structure, because in correct sentence structure we're always talking about now space. We're not talking about substitutions or so the subtraction of something or the approximation of something, we're talking about the facts and the now space. So therefore, those meanings of tilde would not apply. So therefore, what I've done, and uh, well, actually in my code dictionary that uh, I have co-authored with my great friend, tutor, and brother, colon, raven, hyphen, farhide, hyphen, tohidi, colon, efferin, we've taken the tilde and given it the designation of representing location. And as far as I know, uh, Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller uses it for the same thing. And so what I'm going to do now is go through many of the different ways it could be used to show what a location is. And I'm going to go backwards, scrolling my screen downwards to show you. So first of all, what is a location? A location is a claim of space with the conveyances by a contract. So if we look at that backwards, for the contract of the conveyances is with the space of this claim with the finite mean by the location. Everything is contract, ladies and gentlemen. And so a location is just conveying that. It's the space where the, lo where the conveyances, contract conveyances take place. And as you see here at the beginning, I have a tilde in front of this 11. 
which means this 11 is a location. And if you notice also, it's followed by a dash. The dash is different than the hyphen. The dash is longer than the hyphen. This is not a long dash. This is just a dash. And the dash simply means, in plain English terms, terminology to explain it for the purposes of this video, that this location number 11, this number 11, is related to what's on the other side of the dash. That's all it means. So now let's move on to the closure on what a tilde is. Again, you see a different location here for the 10. You see the tilde in front of the 10. The 10 is a location which is different than the location of the 11. And so in this location, we have a finite mean of tilde. For the tilde of this finite mean is with this claim of this location with the certification by this claim. For this claim of the certification is with this location of this claim with the finite mean by the tilde. So to briefly run through that using uh, correct sentence structure articulation, the cause is the tilde. We have also the symbol and the word. Both of those things, because it is a symbol, articulating the term tilde, what is it concerned with? It's concerned with the finite mean. What is possessing the finite mean? A claim. What's the claim concerned with? Location. What's possessing the location? Certification. And what is the authority of the certification? This claim that we're making. So then backwards, the same thing would apply. The facts maintain the same value, forwards and backwards, mathematical interface intact. The cause would be the claim concerned with what? Certification. What's possessing the certification? The location. What's the location concerned with? A claim. What's possessing the claim? The closure, the finite mean. And what is the authority of the finite mean? The tilde. So now we're going to go through some examples of how the tilde can be used in correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar. So at number nine, you can see this is a registered number that one could get at the post office. And this is one way to write that number, if you choose. So we're separating these numbers and these letters, these hieroglyphs, not only with hyphens, which denote compound facts or compound knowns, but also tildes, because each of these components are individual locations, depending upon what you're doing with it. Now another way to write that would be this. You see a number eight. The same number written as one whole entire entity, one whole entire location. Because a registered number is a location different than other registered number locations. Moving on to number seven. This is uh, the way a tilde could be used in a name, a correct live life claim name. Now, for illustrative education and entertainment purposes, I have chosen this name. Colon Lou hyphen C colon fur comma space tilde Roman numeral two. So that's basically Lucifer the second. That's one way to write that. If it's a Lucifer the second, then it would be Lucifer Jr. You could also articulate it that way, as you can see here, for the Lou hyphen C of the fur comma space tilde Jr. as opposed to tilde Sr. Just like tilde 2 as opposed to tilde 1 or tilde 3, or whatever the case may be. Moving on to number 5. Here's an address for the tilde 666 hyphen tilde spooky lurky lane comma space colon Barrett hyphen door comma space Mordor 
comma space tilde zero zero six six six. Now, this would be the domicile. Sorry, domicile location. This is the street name or the lane name or whatever lane it is. It's the road, and then this would be the city. And then this would be the territory, the state, whatever. And then this would be the zip. Now, some people, some people don't like to participate with this as a fact because it means something perhaps negative to them or detrimental to them. They don't want to deal with it. So it's okay if you do this. And it's not there, but it is there, if you catch my drift. And another way to use the tilde would be when one would articulate a now space continuum location, such as the scheduled now space location of this week's For the Now Space News, which is coming up on this Saturday. And you could articulate that location by saying for the hour hyphen 2311 hyphen Eastern Standard, which is given closure to the hour using a 24 hour clock, comma space day 19. These are all locations. You see the tilde in front of each individual location. Saturday is a location as opposed to Sunday or Monday or Friday. And then the number of the month used in the commonly used calendar that everyone, as far as I know, and everyone around me that I contract with uses this calendar, so that's why I use it. And then the month. The location of the month is different than December. It's different than September, October, etc., etc. And then the year, 2022. So I've given closure to all those things in that uh, claim right there, number four. Now, another way to write the same thing, or almost the same thing, without the hour, would just be for the day 19, Saturday, month 11, November, year 2022. And then number two shortens that up even more. Number one shortens it up even more and then zero puts it down to its basic components now ladies and gentlemen using looking at, at these date locations over here it depends upon what the contract is and who you're contracting with as to which kind you would use if you want to give the full closure, it means you do not want any misunderstanding at all to be construed. If you use this, then there's already a contract of cognition there where the other contract party would know what you're talking about when you say 19 and 11 and 2022, that they would know to ascribe that, that oh, that's the year, oh, that's the month, and oh, that's the day. Okay? But the most important thing with correct sentence structure is to give closure and articulate closure, which is what I've done with the tilde here and showed you many different ways to use the tilde in your correct sentence structure contracts. Now, people may ask, well, how, how can time, time or dates be a location? Well, it's just like looking at a, at a map where you have you know, the city of maybe Los Angeles and then the city of New York and then the city of Houston. Those are all locations on a map that you can look at and you can travel to those places. They exist. They always exist pretty much in the now space. I'm pretty sure New York exists right now and I can probably travel there. I know LA exists. I can probably travel there and I can travel to Houston. I know they exist in the now space continuum. Same thing with these uh, time locations, uh, like for example, 2311 uh, Saturday, Eastern Standard Now Space, Eastern Standard Continuum. I know that that exists. And just like on a, on a map, 
if I look at all these time locations, if I have the correct vessel or vehicle, I can travel to each time location, whether it's last week, next week, next year, 10 years ago, 100 years ago. If I have the correct vehicle or vessel to take me to those locations, I can go there because time, time is a location. Hence, that's why we use the tilde. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the tilde. Hope it's given you some closure. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, you can contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen, or you can study the over 400 videos for free that I've published on my YouTube channel. You can also join the two tiers of membership. If you join tier two, there is exclusive, there are exclusive benefits to that, exclusive content you can access that are not available to the public. If you join tier one, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. It helps keep this uh, channel going and helps keep my equipment up to date so that I can get these types of educational knowledge cultivation videos out there to the public so that we can get this data out there for people to learn it who want to learn it and it's readily available and easily cognized. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.